Um, okay, I guess it's recording. Um, hello everyone, I'm back with a brand new blog. Sorry about that, I had to restart my blog because apparently we were running into issues. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, I don't know what happened. Um, another thing I've noticed is that it didn't give me any screen for it. So, let me see what's going on here. Um, oh, you'll hear some feedback. Hold on. Okay. We should be good. Um, let me just... See? <clears throat> okay. So, um, yeah, uh, so I'm back with a brand new blog. Yeah, I'm sorry about my voice. Uh, my voice is kind of hoarse because, uh, like, I'm, uh, well, since you guys aren't going to see the first two takes of this, um, I've, I had a migraine from Monday into, uh, from Monday to, uh, from Monday to Wednesday, no, Sunday to Wednesday, I had a migraine. Then the migraine turned into a sore throat Wednesday, and I've had a sore throat ever since. And I've been taking cold medicine to keep myself from catching the cold, but somehow it's not working. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what's going on. However, um, uh, I can tell you this, I can, I'm can. i pretty sure I was about to come down with bronchitis, and I didn't because of Listerine! Um, I, yeah, Listerine actually kills bronchitis germs, come to find out if you research it. Uh, so, what I was about, what I was saying is, is hello everyone that's here watching. Um, to answer one of my viewers' questions, yes, I am going to be playing some Blaze Blue cross tag. But I'm not sure if I'm buying the game or just playing my, my friend's uh, copies of it. Because, to be completely honest, it's kind of... Uh, <coughs> my history with um, with Blade, Blaze Blue Cross Tag. Well, not Blaze Blue, actually, more so. Uh, I, try, I started Blaze Blue back when it first came out, and I'm a Guilty Gear guy. Like, I've been playing Guilty Gear since I was... Uh, preteen. So I've been playing Guilty since like 2002. And I originally, excuse me, I originally started with Guilty Gear X2 and then I went back and played Double, uh, I played X and then I played Double X and then I played, well, it's Guilty Gear X2, really. But, um, Oh my god, I have done so I I I've I've played so many freaking fighters because I love fighting games. Um it's not, it's not as bad as the anime crossover trash Street Fighter game. Oh oh my god, listen, listen. I am so sorry. For everyone that played that played that abysmal, gro grotesque game known as Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, because I don't know what happened to that game. Marvel One was great. Marvel Two was great. Marvel Three was great. Uh, Marvel Three Ultimate was even better than Marvel Three. Um, I mean, I've been playing like you have to understand. I've been playing the Capcom vs. series since it started as X-Men Children of the Atom, which that was a broken game. If you don't believe me, go and ask my favorite character, Iceman. Uh, <laughs> uh, then, then I played Marvel Super Heroes, which uh, that means that I've been playing Spider-Man for almost 30 years. <laughs> um, I played Marvel Super Heroes, got really good with Spider-Man because I love Spider-Man. Um, X-Men vs. Street Fighter is another from one of my favorite games. Love that game. Oh my god, do I love that game. Then we have, uh, 
uh, Marvel superheroes versus Street Fight. Woo! Oh, let me play that, man. Like Marvel, some Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter, man. Let me play some Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter. Oh, oh my God, that oh, oh, love that game. <laughs> Choose your alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready, true believers? I I used to love that when I was a kid. I used to play that game, and I used to uh, do the the uh, do the intro. The greatest fighting game ever hit the, the ever hit the arcade scene is back. It says, "Are you ready, true believers? This is Marvel Superheroes versus Dream Fighter. Behold all the amazing adventure!" Uh, oh my god, I love that game. That game was amazing. Um, then, and then, oh my god, my favorite character, my favorite team up in Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter was Ken and Spider Man. That was my, that was my team. I loved Ken and Spider Man. I also played Ken and, Cap uh, Ken and Ryu. I played, Sakura and Spider-Man, Spider-Man and Blackheart. Oh, oh, give me some Blackheart. Blackheart. Raw Thunder. Raw Thunder. <laughs> Armageddon. I used to love that. Oh my God, Blackheart is one of my favorite characters. You guys don't know who Blackheart is. Blackheart is the son of Mephisto, who wants to take over the. Uh, the he wants to take over Hell. And cast his father out because he thinks that he's a better leader of hell than his dad. They've been at war for years. Read some Ghost Rider comics and some uh, comics from uh, from uh, uh, some Doctor Strange. Oh my God, those comics were great. Oh, oh, those are some awesome characters. My other favorite. Oh, who else? Who was the? Yellow boy. Um, oh, Shuma Gurath. Shuma Gurath and Shuma Gurath and um and and uh, Blackheart used to use together. Or if you played the uh, online one, if you played the later version, oh, uh, oh my God, it was so awesome. Yeah, because Blackheart is OP. That's why Blackheart is super OP. <laughs> Because Blackheart knows everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's who they should have brought back from Marvel vs. Capcom. But you know what? Ah, <laughs> this is Marvel Infinite. When you're when you have Tony Stark take off his mask, right, and he looks like a butt ugly Martian, there's a problem. <laughs> like like Tony Stark took off his mask. And it looked like Clef the boy, like uh, Clef the chin, uh, the boy chin wonder. It was fucking ridiculous. Oh, oh, oh! You think there's just DLC for that game? <laughs> oh, oh no, no! I think Capcom is like, we could save this. Maybe if we actually put in some effort. They, <clears throat> they better make a Marvel Infinite, uh, Ultimate Marvel Infinite. That's all I got to say. They got to make an Ultimate Marvel Infinite because this game is abysmal. I played it, and it's so slow. Holy crap. Spider-Man went back. Like, it went from the progression of Marvel games, like, Spider-Man started off as the fastest character in a slow-ass game. <laughs> and then he became the slowest character in a more fast-paced game. And then he was a mid-speed mid character in a slow-ass game. And then he was a mid-tier horrible character in a, in another terrible game. And, and then it's like, when you got to Marvel 2, he got faster but his animations are still slow. So, oh, hi! How are you? <laughs> um, yeah, his, he is, 
I, like it was. Uh, oh my gosh, she is just the worst. Ah. Uh, anyway. So it was. It, it was bad. Oh, God. Uh, Marvel 2, I used to be told that I couldn't play Spider-Man because he was too fast for the game. And I'm thinking to myself, really? Because his animations are slow as hell. <laughs> um, uh, well, um, my question, uh, my opinions on Noctis being in Tekken 7, Eh. <laughs> I, I, it's like Sasuke's there. That's that's awesome. I'm hoping. I mean, it fits. I mean, Naruto. I mean, a Naruto character's already there. I'm sorry. Sorry for that, Lars. That was you know that was inappropriate. Uh, uh, but it's true. You like Lars, Lars, Lars. I love you, Lars. You're one of my favorite characters in Tekken. But you're a Naruto character. <laughs> like I, I'm. I it's like. I'm surprised that you just don't do Rasengan. Like, come, come on, come on, come. On. Like, I I know Kishimoto worked on you, and I think Kishimoto created that character, which makes sense. <coughs> so, Final Fantasy getting Noctis into the game is okay, I guess. I don't understand how Lar Lars apparently breaks dimensions. Uh, but my other, oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry for making you choke on your root beer. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Lars can do Chidori better than Sasuke, so it's like, congratulations. <laughs> like, I played, I played Naruto Ultimate Ninja Seven, and that's seven. Wow, Ultimate Ninja Seven. Did I really just say that? Ah. Uh, uh, everyone knows that the Naruto Hero only went up to, uh, Naruto Hero only went up to six. Was it six or five? Five, five, five. It only went up to five. Oh my god. Naruto Hero. And for those of you that don't know what Naruto Hero is, you, you, it's called Ultimate, uh, Ultimate Ninja Storm? I think it's called, or, or, because it's like Naruto Ninja Storm is Ninja Storm now, but it used to be, uh, yeah, no, 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 not Generations. This was for the PS2. What was it called for the PS2? Because Naruto Mate Hero is what it was called in Japanese. Oh, really? Oh, Ultimate Ninja, uh, Ultimate Ninja Storm. Oh, God. They should have just called it uh, Naruto the Hero. Naruto the Hero was awesome. <clears throat> well, for those of you that have played Naruto the Hero, uh, I call it Naruto the Hero for PS2. Uh, there is a fifth game. Uh, a lot of people only played up to four because they only released up to four. But there was a fifth game, and the fifth game was actually pretty decent. Uh, it Sasuke was. <clears throat> well, Sasuke is a mid-tier character in that game. Because the fourth is in the game, and the fourth is okay. It's, Itachi's in the game, and Itachi is not anywhere near as broken as he is in, in, in Naruto Mate Hero 3. So that, that tells you something. The fourth isn't broken in that game. None of the Hokages are broken. As a matter of fact, all the Hokages are pretty meh. However, Neji, on the other hand, got, like, a hella buff. Like, Neji's... Neji can catch you with some ridiculous shit. And because of the fact that you can just switch into... Into, uh... Into, uh... Uh... Byakugan. So, in... In Naruto, in, in Naruto Me Hero 3, you couldn't do that. Like, you had to be at certain health levels to do certain moves. Uh, like, if you were at full health, he does one move. If he If he's at... If you're at low health, he does a completely de like a uh, like desperation move. It was oh my god. 
yeah, you say that until you read Naruto and see a giant spike through his chest. And then and then and then they were like, "Oh, we're gonna bring him back, psych!" <laughs> oh man, you guys thought we were bringing Neji back? No, somebody's got to die. And I was like, <coughs> "Really? Does Sai have that big of a base? That does he have that big of a fan base that, that he didn't get killed? Like, why not kill? Why not kill Neji? Why kill Neji when you could have killed Sai?" <laughs> Or Choji. Oh my god, they should kill it. Choji. Choji ain't, is nothing. And a lot of people are like, that's horrible. Don't say that about Neji. I'm like, Neji is like, like about Choji. They're like, don't say that about Choji. I'm like, um, well, I'm sorry, but your character didn't do Jack. What did he do? He tried to roll at a god. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. He fought pain. Him and his dad did a roll, and Pain stopped them with Shinra Tensei in two directions. <coughs> that was freaking funny. <sighs> um, yeah, but Naruto the Hero had a fifth game. Um, the fifth game it covers uh up. To Asuma's death. What's he doing in that game? Is he done in Kakuzu in that game? He done or might have been. I don't remember. No! No, he's not. It doesn't go that far. That's right. Um, so... So, the... If you played Naruto Big Hero 4, it goes up to uh, them defeating Ga uh, uh, defeating uh, what's his name? Sasori in battle. Like, it's just like the first arc of, of Naruto. And hello! Um, it goes up to the first arc in Naruto... And then the fifth one goes a bit further, and it, like, the fifth one goes a bit further, uh, it goes up to them meeting Sasuke again in one of the coolest fights ever, uh, even better than it was in, in the comic book or in the series. Uh, it was a really awesome fight. Uh, however, however, Sasuke's outfit really does make him look like a stripper. Like, I was expecting Naruto to just slip him 20. <laughs> I know a lot of people are like, shame on you! I'm like, no, no, we need to just, we just need to call it as we see it. He looks like a stripper. He looks like a Rochimaru's boy toy. <laughs> I love Sasuke to death, but that outfit made him look like, like, like a boy toy. Um... The next thing, uh, well, here's the, the another, uh, thing. We have, uh, no, uh, let's see, no, to make Hero 5. Yeah, that game was a lot of fun. You do have broken characters, though, like, like, uh, uh, Diodara. Diodara is one of the most ridiculous freaking characters in that game. Wow! <laughs> wow! Uh, uh, I I feel some kind of way about that. <laughs> anyway, um, hello. Uh, we like Sasuke. Sasuke is one of my favorite characters. I can't talk trash on him when the end of like I hate to say this. Kishimoto didn't know how to end that comic. <laughs> he, he really didn't. Um, Kishimoto was just like, hey guys, what are we going to do? We're going to do this awesome thing here. Uh, so, uh, here's your war. Then, he, then he's like, everything is okay, except for the feelings. And then, like, it went from being a story about growing up to being a fighting game. 
Because towards the end of the story, he literally goes, here comes a new challenger. And Sasuke's like, it's not over, Naruto. We need to finish this. And the two of them fight with, like, low energy and god-tier powers. What? <laughs> and I was just like, Sasuke, this is stupid. Sasuke did it because they couldn't have Naruto <laughs> come out of a war like that unscathed. So they were like, these two are going to rip each other's arms off. And they did. And I'm just like, why? Why? That's unnecessary. <laughs> But then, but then you get to the idea that you realize that Naruto, like, Naruto and Sasuke have to be G's because they slept with their wives and conceived children, like, like, as, like, partial amputees. <laughs> like, Naruto at least had a fake arm to work that. I mean, like, I mean, if we're going to really talk about anime sex, <laughs> if I was Naruto and I had Hinata, Man, that would be a wild night. <laughs> uh, Sasuke, on the other hand, I kind of wonder how that went. Because Sasuke, I mean, Sasuke's a G, and he can, he can, he can do a lot of things one-armed, but he left Sakura. Like, I always thought that since Sakura had the super strength, like, she would be into wrestling. I, I don't, or, or, or just, like, really rough sex for some weird reason. Why am I talking about anime people's, like, like sexual fantasies? <laughs> <coughs> oh, man. We have really gone downhill. Uh, uh, I, I mean, uh. yeah, because it's an awesome fight. That is an awesome fight. Oh, my God. I love that fight. You trap like the the tail beasts and moons, and then you make the the Uchiha Megazord. <laughs> That's what it was. It was the Uchiha Megazord, and and the and the nine tail fox zord. Like, and then they're fighting in like the sky and. Naruto creates two freaking versions of of the Nine Tail Fox. By the way, how did they get the Nine Tail Fox back into Naruto since he was separated from him, and all he had was the Nine Tails of Shadow? I really wish they would explain that. Oh, but that ending fight, the only fight in anime that I've ever seen that was that good. would be Riho versus Kazuma from Scribe. I, and I am a huge fan of Scribe. Why aren't they in any fighting games, man? Like, put Kazuma the Shell Bullet in Tekken. Oh, oh, man, there's a game right there. Uh, you want cross tag? Scribe versus Ruby. And then it's like, versus Persona, versus Blaze Blue, versus, <laughs> versus Guilty Gear. And that, that would be a game. Oh, oh man, that would be a game. Yeah, and it's like, it's, that's what I was about to say. The, 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 the fight that they had, okay, so for those of you that can't see, see the, the chat, uh, a friend of mine has, has brought up about, like, the ending fight being, uh, uh kicking and punching in Naruto. Whoo! Whoo! The ending fight, they were completely exhausted, and they are still going, and they're just like, uh, 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 uh. And they're just still going. And then, like, what's even better is that Naruto tries to punch Sasuke, and Sasuke punches him in the gut, and he does it lightly because he's absorbing what energy uh, Naruto had left. And that was awesome. I love that fight. That fight is amazing.
then we have uh but uh more to your to your question about Tekken 7 how I feel about Noctis Noctis is in the game eh okay that's cool but Noctis is also uh one of like Noctis isn't as bad as like Geese Howard being in the game don't get me wrong Geese Howard being in the game has confirmed something for me. Akuma being actually essential to the Mishima story has done something. And I'll explain why. I had a theory years ago that the fighting game, <clears throat> that the world of fighting games are all connected. I got this idea from Capcom vs. SNK2. And I'll explain exactly what I mean. In Capcom vs. SNK2, there's this whole entire thing where they explain that, uh, that, like, it's like this millennial tournament that they constantly do. So there had to be other crossover tournaments that just didn't have games. And, and what happens is, is that, like, Ken knows who Terry Bogart is. Because apparently they've met before on the on the on the fighting circuit, but it's just a story that wasn't told. Ryu met Ryo Sonazaki once before. Iori has like Iori and Kyo have fought against like Guile and other characters like it. It, it, that's what I'm getting at. Like Sagat knows Joe Higashi and Joe Higashi knows Sagat. And that's interesting, because both characters call themselves the Muay Thai King, which means that Joe Higashi probably got that title after defeating Adon. <coughs> and that's, like, this is why I'm saying, like, I believe that they had a shared universe. And then you have Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which 100% confirmed that for me. And Street Fighter Cross Tekken was just this amazing. It, oh. Street Fighter Cross Tekken is a terrible game, but the storyline is really good. That's the thing about it. The story is good, but the game is shit. So, so in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, they explain that that M Bison actually knows what the Mishima Zaibatsu is, which, that's freaking awesome. Like, he actually knows what the Mishima Zaibatsu is. And I was really surprised by that. And uh, accordingly, the Mishima Zaibatsu is, if, for those of you that don't know, it's the organization that Hihachi Mishima from Tekken owns. So that means either Bison has done dealings with, with uh, Hihachi, or he just happens to know about it through his information circles on the black market. <coughs> and, or in the criminal underworld. There is another thing with... Um, shit. Bison also knows Geese. Bison and Geese know each other from previous dealings. So, which is interesting. Because Geese fought Bison to a standstill. Really? That's actually pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's something that exists, and this is why I love fighting games, and I love the idea of them having a shared universe. Uh, getting more to, wait, this is, yeah, it is, the bishop's done. Okay, uh, getting, getting more to, uh, Getting more to uh, the topic for today, um, which I should really edit the topic uh, just so that you guys can see it. Uh, let me just edit this topic. Um, it's weird. It's not. Ah, here we go. Ha ha! Got it. Uh, 
<clears throat> We're going to cheat and call this take two. There we go. All right, guys. Time on to the time to talk about today's topic. Um, today's topic is going to be something interesting. Um, <clears throat> what has happened is, is that, uh, we, let's see. So today's topic was about my convention adventure. Uh, I am, I went to Teco Shokan, KatsuCon, and, uh, and Steel City Con all within the last couple of months. And I have to say that I know a lot of you are just like, well, what happened? Like, where have you been? And I'm just like, uh, well, I've been doing a lot. Um, so I wanted to tell you guys about my adventure a little bit. Uh, so what happened was is that I went to KatsuCon, but I only had, like, if you remember my previous video, I said I only had a couple of weeks to work on it. And I ended up finishing the project, too. Um, I don't have the handle for it because I left it downstairs, which I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do in my next video. I'll show it off. But, um, yeah. Uh, we, we, me and my cosplay group, we had a lot of hardship this year because of the weather. The weather was terrible. And we worked on our projects like crazy. Like, uh, one of the cosplays that I did was a God Eater. I actually reworked my God Eater cosplay. And it turned out really nice. I personally like it. Um, I'm very proud of it. Uh, I can't say how proud I am because there are no words. Uh, I'm extremely proud of that cosplay. I loved it. Uh, we also had, <coughs> we also had to do other stuff such as, like, we had to get, um, hotel rooms, material, had to have time to work on projects. Like, it, it was just nuts. It was just a crazy thing to work on. And I cannot say how wonderful it is. That I got the chance to, to finish all of my projects. I was so happy when they were done. Um, my God Arc, however, I will give you a bit of a story. Uh, when I was working on the God Arc, uh, it was in February and it seemed like it was nice weather. I went outside, it kept raining, so I covered it with a tarp so that it could dry, so the paint could dry. Then it downpoured, and it downpoured so much, it went through the tarp and wet the sword, and the sword absorbed all the water. So, the paint started running, and it made my god arc look like crap. So, I had to redo the god arc. Like, I had an entire month to redo the god arc, and, I, and we had an entire month of bad weather. Like, it was ridiculously hard to get my god arc finished, but I somehow did it. Took time, but got it done. Um, the next thing that I worked on was the bracelet. I made a bracelet since the bracelet I had was too small. Um, the newer bracelet that I made, it, it was really nice. Um, I liked it. I was very proud of it. And uh, it needs a better paint job, but, but I didn't have the time to give it one. So now that I don't have any conventions for a couple of months, I think that's going to be it. Uh, I think that I'm going to work on that, along with a new project that I'm going to be working on. I was able to get all my costumes ready for Tekko, though. Uh, I went to Tekko, uh, and I did a couple of photo shoots. I spent $100 on photo shoots, uh, like 35 here, because I, 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 like all my photo shoots I did doubles with, with people, and one photo shoot I completely just paint. I gave the girl, like, uh, I owed her, I think it was like 50, 50 bucks, and then I, I gave her 53, and my friend gave her 10, so she made $63, like $13 more than what she had originally charged us, uh, or charged me, because originally it was supposed to be just a photo shoot of me, 
but I had a friend that was doing a uh, Gundam Wing cosplay, so yeah. And if you guys are Gundam fans, yes, I cosplay Trace Kushinada, and I shot down the Gundam during during the convention. Get at me! Get at me! Cosplaying Trace Kushinada and shot down the Gundam. Inazaku! Take that! <laughs> so uh, I was I was ecstatic. I got out of there, and I was just like. Oh, I have I have shot down the Gundam. He died with no grace. No, I hope that I hope that he in, in, that in death he he showed some grace. That's what I said. When I got out of the cockpit, I says I have shot down the Gundam. I only my only hope is that in in death he showed some grace and he walked off. This kid knew there was a kid there who freaking knew who I was and looked at me and was like. That's Trace. <laughs> and I was just like, <sighs> I walked off. I was so proud of myself. It was so much fun. Uh, I have pictures of me in the in the Gundam cockpit, uh, in the machine cockpit, playing this Gundam game. It was a lot of fun. Um, the other cosplay that I did, I was Akla Nokia. I was Vax Zoldan. I I did. I did a lot of cosplaying that week. I did six different costumes for that week. I was Dimitri. Dimitri Maximoff from Darkstalkers. And when I walked around, there were some kids that didn't even know what that game was. They know Morgan, but they do not know Dimitri because no one has seen Dimitri in over 25 years. It's stupid. Because we need a Darkstalkers game. Can we get another Darkstalkers game, people? I love Dimitri Maximoff. I did it based off of this concept art that I had found online. And it looked really good. Like I was really like I said, I was really proud of this. Um what else did I do? Excuse me. Sorry about that. I do believe that was the phlegm that was causing my uh, sore throat. Don't worry, it's down to sit down. I am. I know I'm strange. Uh, wow! I just noticed that when I sat down, like a gust of baby powder came up into the air. <laughs> That's adorable. Uh, it is. Yeah, so, like I was saying before, um, it was, the convention was a lot of fun. Uh, the convention was so much fun. I, I had a lot of an enjoyable time. Then you guys probably noticed this. This, I got at Steel City Con, because I went there with like 200 something dollars in order to play, in order to, uh, buy some new toys. Uh, that's why my room is a mess, because I'm still, like, organizing up where everything should go. So. Okay. Catch you later. Um, yeah, so I had to organize where everything needed to go, so. So, yeah, it's, it was fun. Um, the conv the, the convention, oh my god, we had so much fun. Went to the arcade the day before, uh, the day before Steel City, and I took my friends. I treated uh, group members from Diamond Dogs out for an arcade day, and everyone had so much fun. It was so much that we did. We did VR, we played fighting games, we played Tetris, we played a lot of freaking games, and we just enjoyed ourselves. Oh my god. I 100% I really do appreciate the friends that I have, and I'm glad that I have them, hence why I took them out. Uh, okay, so 
I want to talk, yeah, so that was my convention adventure. I did a lot of cosplay. I'm going to be working on something else. Um, I'm going to be working on a common Rider pretty soon, which I might be doing uh, fan fiction for. So I'm super excited for that. Next. Uh, wow, we have a packed episode today. Um, I want to discuss something, because this is something that needs to be discussed. And... I'm constantly getting questions, not so much from the main crowd, but from people who are looking for people who are looking for doms. So I wanted to talk about uh, what is called the dom complex. Uh, okay, so the dom complex is this really, really difficult to explain psychological state of being, and what what happens is is that there is a certain etiquette and behavior that most people show in the ABDL community, but for some reason they don't seem to understand like how that works. But um, I'm going to okay, so I'm going to explain what the Dom complex is. And I'm also going to explain social awkwardy that then that then sort of determined on the thought process of the said Dom complex. Okay? Okay, so let's get started. Let's really talk about this. So the Dom complex is a set of of decisions, I guess, or reasons, reasonings of why, of, of re, it's a set of ideas and reasonings of why you would prefer or choose somebody to be a submissive. It is a set of rules that is essentially set in the Dom's mind. Um, it's, it's more of a psychological state, if it makes sense. So the psychological state of this is, is let's say I'm a dog and I am looking for a submissive. There are certain things that go into what I am looking for. And that the, the idea is, the idea is created, okay. The thought process is determined by how good of a dom the person is. And I know some people are gonna be like, what does that mean? I'll get to that in just a second. <clears throat> in this world, you have good doms, you have bad doms. Good doms. Understand that not every submissive is just automatically attuned to their whim. That every person is not the same and that every person is different. Right? The, the complex to that is created from people not understanding said said idea. So let me give you an example. A good example of this would be you meet a Dom out on the street. And this this I mean like I shouldn't even say on the street because that sounds like you can just walk up to somebody. No, it's like you meet a Dom at an event. The Dom goes, hey, do you want to be my submissive? Your answer is well, it should be, well, what does that entail? If the Dom's response is, is, what do you mean by that? Then you automatically know what the problem there is. Here's another thing. If the Dom doesn't know you well enough, so why are you at, like, how, like, how is he coming to the conclusion that that's what, how is he or she coming to the conclusion that you are the prime, like, the prime submissive? Every Dom has, like, catering whims, so why would you just automatically, like, do such thing? This is, this is part of the Dom complex. This is a term that's not in existence, as far as I know. Um... This is something I, I, I called it this because it 
it's something that bad doms do. Um, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a real good example. So, you have a situation in which you have a situation where a dom asks a submissive to be his son, knows nothing of their of their hard hard limits or anything like that, know nothing of 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 what their kink is, and really doesn't care what their kink is, and is just like. Well, you serve me. That doesn't, like, this is a really c complex, like, state that a lot of people find themselves in. And the reason that they find themselves in this problem is because of the fact that even though we're all in the community, we don't necessarily teach people that that's not the way to go about it. Well, we do, but people don't listen. And, and this is why you have a lot of submissives in abusive relationships, because they accept a lot of this and think that this is the way that the way to go. And it's not. See, a proper dom would actually be like, well, where are your kinks? What are your, what are your uh, hard limits? What are your soft limits? Uh, what do you consent and not consent to? Um, what would you like me to do? Because it's a two it's a two-way street. But you have people who don't view it as such. I am a dumb, thus my whims must be must be fulfilled. It doesn't matter what you're into. That's a really stupid way to go about something, but that's how some people actually go about it. And it's wrong. It's it's wrong. It's wrong. And but this is a a complex thing. Let me give you an oh, even better example. When I was, a couple of weeks ago, I got a message on Facebook from a person who was like, oh, uh, uh, are you into me? Here's some pictures of me naked. You know you want me. And I'm just like, um, what? I'm sorry, I, no, I am not into you. And, and, and why are you sending me pictures without my consent? Like, what, what the hell? And they were like, bullshit! I'm like, what? It is? How? Because submissives are just supposed to follow dogs. But you'd be surprised on how many people actually do have that mindset. And I'm not saying that every dom is that every dom is like this. I'm saying that you have a good number of people who are the loudest who who actually do this foolishness. And, like, I hate that type of situation because nobody should be in it. It's a terrible situation to have a, a submissive go through. And it is a serious fucking problem. Like, the biggest issues that people are having is the acceptance of each other's space. And the, the acceptance of one person's kink versus what you're into. Like, submissive and dom, like, this is, this is supposed to be a work together relationship and only one side is working. See, that's that's the problem here. You can't have just a one-sided relationship. It doesn't work. So it creates this dichotomy where a lot of people believe that this is what doms and submissives are. It's kind of like the idea where you have people who come to the conclusion that Fifty Shades of Grey is a perfect example of the BDSM community. It's a stupid idea and it's a stupid thing to say, but there are people that actually believe that and they're fucking wrong. Um, but, but there are these doms who call themselves doms and they're not doms. They're more so just people who want to be bossy and bully people. But they try to say that they are a dom because they know that that will get like a submissive to follow them. And this is what leads into a lot of abusive relationships. And I know some of you are like, well, why don't the people get out of those relationships? Well, in some cases, because they're afraid that they might be called a terrible submissive. And that's really dumb. Because you're not a terrible submissive if you don't follow a jackass. 
Like, if you choose not to follow a jackass, that doesn't make you a terrible submissive. That makes you an intelligent person. And if there are people in the fetish community that are telling you you're a terrible sub because you refuse to follow a jackass, then that's their problem. And maybe they shouldn't be in the community. Because I can be completely honest, the community can do with less of them. Uh, it's, it is, it is ridiculous. Like, like I said before, it's the idea that no one is respecting each other's space. And that leads to a lot of issues and problems. So, um, it, it's, it's, this is what I tried to explain last night. I was way too tired to do so. But yeah, you do have this, like, thing where there are doms who don't care what their submissives are into or anything, and they will not indulge it. So then why do you have a submissive if, you, if it's only a one-sided thing? Because I'm a dog. You don't know how many times I've heard this and had conversations with jackasses like that. And I, 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 and I personally, like, say, well, it's about time you get educated or you leave. One of the two. Because the community is not about you. Like, there was a, uh, a dude. There was one guy that I knew from one of my events, in one of the events I went to who was like this, well, he had a chip on his shoulder for a different reason, because um, we had met previously, and he met my, he, he apparently had a thing for my ex-girlfriend, which I was okay with, because we're exes, uh, that occasionally have sex, um, that's, nonetheless, and my, my question to him was, are, like, why are we why why are we doing this? And everyone is just like eh, reasons. And I'm just like, eh, this is stupid. Um so like let me give you an example of what happened. Well actually let me just tell the story. <sighs> I had a photo shoot that I had to be at for a cosplay photo shoot. Went there and this guy shows up. And this guy apparently knew my ex-girlfriend. Don't get me wrong, I love my ex-girlfriend to death. She is she is a wonderful person, but we're exes. <coughs> we mutually broke up. We're still good friends. We still have sex occasionally. Uh, it, it's That's not the problem. The issue that I had was, is that he comes over, and and I was talking about doing a cosplay, and he's like, "You can't do that cosplay." Why? Is there a reason? It doesn't fit me. That's nice, but there are a lot of things that don't fit me. But I still do them anyway. Thank you for your input, though. And he got angry because I said, "Thank you for your input," and I'm just like, and he wanted to fight me so hard. First off. Don't fight someone who actually knows martial arts, because that that's a terrible idea. Two, don't fight someone where an entire park will jump in for said person to beat your ass for trying to attack said person. People. <laughs> but anyway, the whole point was is that he was so angry, and I was just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's wonderful. And, and he was so angry because Brittany kept, uh, oh, my ex-girlfriend, Brittany kept going, uh, well, well, uh, giving me hugs and, and cuddles and different stuff like that. And I'm just like, thank you. I was like, Brie, Brie is awesome. Like I said, she, Brie is awesome. Uh, she's always, she's always there for me, and, and she's just a cuddly, lovable person, and I love her, but here's the problem, here's where the issue kicks in, oh, shit, this dude was so angry, so upset, and he was just like, well, well, I don't appreciate, well, well, I don't appreciate the way that you talk to me. How did I talk to you? Oh! 
and you squeeze and you vibrate. And, and then she goes, bye. And I go, how do you know that loser? And she goes, oh, he's not a loser. He's my friend. I was like, uh-huh. How do you know him? And and her answer to me sounded like he reminded me of, like, this old joke I heard about Princess Peach, like, being, like, being, like, a seven-year-old and, and, and jumping in the back of a van because someone said they had candy. <laughs> She's like, she goes, oh, he gave me candy. What? <laughs> I'm just like, excuse me? Wait, wait, hold on. You're in, you, whoa, whoa. Because he gave you candy is the reason? And she's like, yeah, he gave me reasons. I love candy. And I'm just like, wow. Okay, I was like, that dude is a creep. It's just like, she goes, she goes, uh, yeah, yeah, he kind of hates you. I don't know why he was so mean. He's usually not that mean. And I'm like, it's because because he wants you. Like, that's why. And and she's she's like, huh? Never thought about it. And then went on about her business. And I'm just like. love that girl. That girl is ridiculous. Um, later on, I ran into him, and he's talking about, like, dating all of these people, like, to the people in the crowd at the party, and when he saw me, he's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, what are you doing here? That's what I asked you. I'm like, what? I, I, I come here a lot, actually, for the fetish event. Wait, you're in the community? Yeah, I'm in the community. Why wouldn't I be in the community? What are you into? Well, maybe later tonight you'll find out. Chill out, dude. Calm down. And he's just like... <sighs> I'm just like, what the hell is this guy's deal? Like, he is so angry. And then, like, a car pulls up. And... These girls get out of the car, and I mean, beautiful, like, 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 dancers get out of the car. And these these girls do a lot of dancing, and, and it's because this is at a bar that we are doing, like, they're having a fetish event at, and this is at a uh, bondage ball. Uh, you guys probably see pictures of me on my Facebook uh, at the bondage ball. Yeah, so I'm standing outside, and one of the girls, I go, oh, your hair is really nice. And she's like, thank you. And she says, are you coming in here? I was like, yeah. She says, wait, are you who I think you are? I'm like, maybe. I'll ask you on the inside again. And then she goes, and she went inside. I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. And then uh, one of my friends found out I was there, and he's like, what are you doing outside? Get your ass in here. I was like, oh, okay. I thought you guys were setting up. He said, we are, but like, you can be in here. He's like, dude, you're, you're cool. And so I, I went inside, started getting ready and everything. He, the other guy is pissed because he's like, why do I have to stand outside? And I'm like, dude, chill the fuck out, please. Like, you are just hype for no reason. Like let's, like you you you're at a seven. I need you to be at like a, a two. Like just 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 breathe. Like this guy was so ridiculous. I think about one of those. <laughs> but anyway, um, oh here it is. How did I not see that on? Anyway, uh, he was just being like really rude. And so I later heard him talking to this chick, and he's just like. He says, so yeah, I'm a dom. And uh like I like whippets. They like using whips and tying people up and doing so and such. You know, you should think about being my submissive. What type of fucking pickup line is that? <laughs> First off, you can't just do something like that. And why is he and and that made me curious of why he was angry that I was in the community and, and I was like I 
Oh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, I end up going in the back, getting set up and changed and everything. He comes in. He only has enough money to get a ticket to, for the event. He's no money for drinks. And I go, I'm nice, and I go, yo. I says, uh, I go, you drink vodka? He's like, yeah. I was like, talk to my friend that's a bartender. I go, I go, uh, hey, dude, can you give him uh, a vodka? And he was like, yeah. And as he's, as the bartender's walking off, he's like, it's still sexiest walking. It's the sexiest walk in, in Pittsburgh, man. It's still the sexiest walk. And he's just like, ah. He just goes and gets his stuff. And it was, it was fun. It was fun. I loved it. Here's where things get weird. So as he's talking to the submissive, he he's like just rude. He still hasn't realized that I'm in A B attire yet. But he, he but he is just like rude about like everything. And then the girl sees me and then she goes, oh, You look so cute. And he goes, What? Looks back and sees me and she's just like can I get a picture and a hug? I'm like, yeah. So we walked over to the picture area, took a picture, uh, gave him a hug and everything. I was just like, I said, uh, hi. And she says, you look so adorable. He walks over and you can tell the look in her face was just that of just pure aggression. And, and she goes, she goes, what's your name? I was like, um, my name is Andrew, but, but everyone knows me as Anka. And and she she was so happy to hear this and gave me another hug and just kept telling me how cute I was. Him on the other hand is staring there and staring at me and he goes Then after she leaves, he goes walks up to me and goes, Who are you? I'm like, What? You kid Anka. You don't know me? It's like I'm on YouTube. I says, he's like, what? Yeah, I'm on YouTube. I do a fetish blog. It's like, I'm an ABBL uh, YouTuber. And he goes, <laughs> I was like, well, what's so funny? He says, so I was like, first off, you, he says, he says, where's Bri, where's, where's Bri at then? I was like, oh, she's at home. She doesn't like coming to bars. This is too much alcohol. And he was just like, what? Wait, she's not at this event? No, you do know she's my ex-girlfriend, right? Wait, what? I was like, yeah, she's my ex. She's not, we're not currently dating. We haven't been dating in like two years. And he was just like, oh, oh, by the way, you know she's an AB like myself, right? And he goes, wait, really? Yeah. You mean you never cared to ask her? I never really cared to ask anybody about their fetish. Oh, but you're going to go over here and tell someone that they should be your submissive. Yeah, that's not going to work. See, that's the type of thing of why I'm bringing this up, is because there's there are these people who have this dom complex, but it's, it's more so of a smug than me. It's, I'm a dom. The complex is, I'm a dom, so... What I says goes, and what anybody else's limits or anything else that exists do not matter. That's not true. If you're going to be a dom, and if there are doms watching this, I would like you would like to say this. You hear this from uh, a switch, right? <coughs> As a dom, you make a better dom if you learn more about your submissive. Being a dom is more than just barking out work. Being a dom is more than just, oh, I'm I'm superior to you because I'm above you because I'm your I'm your dominant. Yet yeah, no, there's more to it. There's so much more to the dichotomy of well to the relationship more so than the dichotomy. It is more so important to the anatomy and the relationship as a whole. But you can't just force yourself onto someone else, onto the relationship, and start saying, oh, well, well, you know, blah, 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 
and because I'm a dumb, you automatically have to listen. I don't care what you're into. It doesn't matter because you're not important. If you think that, you have an issue. There is a problem here. There is something that needs to be said. And it is and, and it is a problem. Like, I'm not going to lie. It is a problem. We th There are people that really do believe that in the fetish community. And it's bad. It's bad. But that's essentially where I was going to go with that. Um, I don't want to over-explain anything. Uh, moving on to the second, uh, the last topic, which would be social awkwardness. Social awkwardy is a huge thing in the ABDL community. Holy crap. Um, I want to give, this is not so much to talk about social awkwardy as it is to give examples of ways to <coughs> beat social awkwardy. Um, give yourself time. Uh, I used to do, I used to be socially awkward because I was shy. And I had to deal with my shyness. So I decided to do something based in a book that I had borrowed from my brother. Okay, look, I read The Game by Neil Strauss. And because my brother was reading that book, uh, it's the secret, uh, what is it, Secret Society of the Pickup Artist. And it is a terrible book. It is a terrible book. Like, it, the misogyny in it is crazy. But let's get to the bigger point of what I'm trying to explain. It's not that that I'm trying to bring up. It's excuse me. The biggest issue that that people are going to realize that they have, right, is trying to not admit faults with themselves and social awkwardy is created through is through that actually like i'm shy i know i'm shy but i can't i can't do anything about it you can you can do something about it here's a small little exercise that you can do in order to make your social awkwardy go down so to help smooth it out there is a thing called the the five second rule, right? I believe it's five seconds or three seconds, three second, three second rule in the pickup artist book. And it was talking about if you can't talk to a woman in three seconds, you've lost your chance. Why don't why can't you apply that to working with your shyness? If you can't walk up to someone and say hello within three seconds of walking near them, and or saying good morning and smiling. And when I say good morning and smiling, you go, good morning, and just keep going. Uh, and they and they respond, <clears throat> that'll create a problem. It's like, I had to do this as practice, and I kept doing this over and over and over again, saying good morning, and then just keep on going. It, it, it really does help. Like, the three-second rule really does work for that. Like, there are concepts in the book that you can use in order to fix social awkwardy. Um, but the rest of the book is trash because of the misogynistic views that it has. It's, it's misogynistic views are terrible. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one way. That's a really easy exercise. Um, just, like, a lot of people say say that I don't think I have a great smile. Well, nobody has a great smile. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. So you're on an even playing field with everyone else. So just go, good morning, smile normally, and just keep going. Think, it's almost like being Peter Pan and being able to fly. Think happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts, and everything will be fine. I wanted to give that piece of advice out there because... <laughs> I know a lot of us suffer from social awkwardy. And I thought that this would be a good way for, for you to be able to get through it without any type of issue. Um, so, yeah, that's that's essentially that. Uh, I was That's all I really wanted to talk about was the three-second rule as far as social awkwardy goes. Um, I thought that that would, be, that would be a real big help 
Um, if you guys have social awkward problems and you want to be able to talk to more people in like like bigger environments, all you have to do is uh, put it, put your uh, put your questions in the comments and we'll, we'll talk about them. Oh, another thing. Uh, yeah. So. If I'm not mistaken, I should be doing more of these now because convention season's over. However, I will be working on some stuff. Uh, I'll be doing another playtime episode pretty soon, either tonight or tomorrow, probably tomorrow, depending on what time I get back from D&D tonight. So, uh, I know a lot of people are like, you are such a nerd. Yes, yes I am. I love rolling me some dice and, and insta-killing some monsters. I'm playing a monk for the first time, and let me tell you something. Being Bruce Lee is fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's essentially what you are. You're Bruce Lee. You just, whoa, whoa. It's awesome. I love it. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to bring that to you guys' attention. Um, I have some other really cool exercises. Oh, for anxiety. If you have problems with anxiety, keep a, a bottle of ice water with you. Uh, ice water can calm down the nerves. And it, it actually will help you feel a little bit better. Ice water also helps if you are if you are drowsy or, or suffering from anxiety. It helps. Calm the nerves. It'll break it down. <sighs> Excuse me. So, doing these two things might be a little bit of, of how it might help. This is something that I was doing for a while. A lot of people, some people just come to the conclusion that I'm socially awkward and I'm going to be like this forever. You don't have to be. So don't let it control you. Like, like there's no reason why your life should be stuck to that. But anyway, I would like to thank you all for watching today's episode. And I will be back with another blog soon, actually probably within the next week, because I've had a lot of different topics I really wanted to cover, and a couple of things that were brought up to me that I would like to cover. Um, so today's episode was jam-packed. Oh, this summer I'm planning to do uh, uh, a live, uh, like we're, we're talking about, thinking about doing a Twitch. So I have a Twitch already. But that one is for uh, a game, excuse me, um, for a gaming group that I'm working with. Um, but I'm going to be making an ABDL Twitch stream. That's going to be called the Kid Anka Twitch stream pretty soon. Uh, Kid Anka's Twitch stream is, uh, is going to be uh, basically us doing Twitch, me talking to you guys while playing video games, and having a pretty awesome time. I'm going to be planning to get like a smaller screen so I can do dual screen. And if I do dual screen, then I can talk to you guys and be here. It'll, it'll, it'll work. We'll, we'll come up with something. But I am so glad that we got the chance to chat. And I will be back with another blog in about a couple of days. Maybe, if not, next weekend. But I will catch you all later. Love your faces. Bye!